Now, if your brain is still intact after that strenuous dimensional analysis, now if your brain is still intact after that strenuous dimensional analysis exercise where we related the edge length of a cubic unit cell to the density of silver, you may be wondering why we're spending so much time talking about the unit cells and the crystal structures of metals and only elemental metals from the periodic table. Well, elemental metals from the periodic table, silver, gold, polonium, iron, etc., have been our jumping off point for our discussion of the unit cell because they have by far the simplest unit cells of any crystal that you might encounter. Most solids, particularly ionic solids, have significantly more complex unit cells than elemental metals. Even a simple ionic compound like sodium chloride has a relatively complex unit cell compared to a metal. All the elemental metals on the periodic table have cubic unit cells, which means that their unit cell has equal length, width, and height. Many ionic compounds have unit cells that are not cubic in nature. Sodium chloride, which we usually think of as kind of our simplest, friendliest, most everyday ionic compound, does have a cubic unit cell, but it's quite a bit more complex than a metal's unit cell. And that's First and foremost, because instead of having one single type of atom in the unit cell, now we have two ions that define the unit cell. We have both sodium plus one and chloride minus one. Partly by virtue of the fact that we have multiple types of atoms or multiple types of ions in the unit cell, ionic compounds unit cells are inherently more complex than metals. And even a simple ionic compound like sodium chloride's unit cell, can be intimidating. The basic sphere packing look, the space filling model look at sodium chloride's unit cell shows us the smaller purple sodium ions packed right next to the green larger chloride ions. And in this packing arrangement, you have alternating positive ion, negative ion, positive ion, negative ion, alternates positive, negative which is what you would expect from Coulombic attraction because the cation and the anion must be attracted to each other while the like charges are trying to push each other apart. So in an ionic compounds unit cell, you have a balance both in terms of the packing of the size of the ions and how the, li the like charges repel each other while the opposite charges attract each other. The way these forces balance out give us a sodium chloride unit cell where each sodium cation is surrounded by six near neighbor chloride anions oriented kind of octahedrally around the sodium cation and the opposite is true from the perspective of chloride. This gives us a unit cell which looks kind of like an FCC unit cell but with sodium cations intercalated into what are sort of empty spaces between the chlorides. So if we look at the cutaway of the sodium chloride unit cell we see that the chloride ions are sitting in an almost FCC fashion, except the corner ions are not touching the facial ion in the center. And the void spaces in between are filled in with the purple sodium cations. And so we can, having a look at a cubic unit cell like this, even though it's more complex, we can still use some of the tools that we've been practicing with the metal ion unit cells to figure out some important aspects of how the sodium chloride unit cell represents the compound. First and foremost, for this to be the unit cell of sodium chloride, there must be equal numbers of sodium and chloride ions inside the unit cell because the formula of the unit cell has to reflect the empirical formula of the compound. So if we look at how we would count up the atoms, or ions in this case, in the unit cell, we'd see they, there must be four chloride ions in the unit cell because it packs like an FCC unit cell. We have an eighth of a chloride ion at each corner. We have half of a chloride ion in each face. So doing our usual FCC math, we have three chloride ions total at the faces and one chloride ion total, eight eighths at the corners. So we have four chloride ions total in the unit cell. The sodium ions are more difficult to deal with because they sit kind of on the middle of the edges of the unit cell. And in this case, when you have an atom sitting in between on an edge like this, if there's an eighth of an ion at the corner, an eighth of a chloride ion at the corners, this is a quarter of a sodium ion here. 
So in each face, each one of these sodium ions would count as a quarter of a sodium ion. So if you counted them all up, you would find that there are three total sodium ions, 12 times 4, sitting along the edge lengths here, and one more sodium ion that's hidden at the very center of the unit cell, which you can't see in the space filling model, but you can see in the ball and stick model here. And so we can use our usual types of counting rules to establish that the sodium chloride unit cell has four sodium ions and four chloride ions inside it. And from that, we could do similar types of calculations like we've done for the metals if we know through x-ray studies the edge length of the sodium chloride unit cell, we could calculate the density of sodium chloride and do similar exercises. Because the sodium chloride ion unit cell is, the sodium chloride unit cell is a little more complex, we won't go into that specific example, but it may appear on homeworks or quizzes in the future. We will look at an example of how we can use our basic counting rules to derive things like empirical formula, even from relatively complex ionic unit cells. And our first example will be rhenium oxide.